Yeah. So the way that my business and my coaching journey started, it, it wasn't even that I looked at it as a business. It kind of happened just naturally. Um, I played professional basketball. I played overseas and I was it was the summertime. I was back home. I would be working on my game, whether it be at a private gym, public gym. I would always have parents that would come up to me and they would want me to work with their kids. Or Can you show my son this? Can you show my daughter this? So it kind of naturally organically happened. And at first, funny when I look back on it, because at first I would kind of ignore it. I would push it to the side. Um, I would just, you know, I just wanted to work on my game and get back to doing what I was doing. But one day I finally, I gave it a shot. Um, I gave it a chance and I really, really enjoyed it. Like, I left the gym that day with a feeling that I never had felt before. Like it was like I had really impacted somebody and it was about something that was bigger than me. So that one kid, he's actually playing at the next level now. So like he, all, one kid turned to two, turned to four, turned to eight, turned to 16, and it just kind of snowballed over to where now, I mean, we're a six-figure business now, working with NBA players, WNBA players, um, players of all levels. So it's just kind of organically happened. Mm -hmm. I know it's kind of a, uh, I almost want to say like a trend now. There's a new coach popping up every day, but mm – -hmm. I think when you focus on impacting people and trying to make a difference and really caring about the people that are in the gym with you or on the field with you, I feel like your business will just grow organically. Like that needs to be your focus, impacting people as much as you can, however you can help them going above. I did it for free for like two years. I did it for free. Just tried to help kids in my family, try to help them get to the next level. And you kind of try to be that person that you didn't have when you were growing up, yeah. you know, I you have people in your circle, but I wish I had a mentor. I wish I had somebody that played and it was able to kind of show me the way. So mm -hmm. that's how I try to look at it and it turned into a business and it's the same passion that I started with. So that's that's how I got started with it. That's awesome. So tell us a bit about your, your coaching business then. What do you, does your company specialize in? Uh, well, first and foremost, we, we want to specialize in teaching the right way. Because I'm sure you see it in what you've done, too. Like, there's a lot of BS <laughs> that's out there in every sport. Everybody thinks they can teach now. Everybody thinks they can train now. Some people have never played the game. Not that you need to have played to be a great coach. I don't believe that. But I think you need to really be knowledgeable and know what you're talking about, obviously. Especially, I talk to coaches, and they're just starting out. You know, they're relatively young. And a lot of coaches work with really, really high-level players. And it's like, yeah. and you might want that. Oh, but are you ready for that opportunity when it comes? Because mm -hmm. you have to know your stuff. Because even though I played at a high level when I first, you know, when I first started, I wanted those high level athletes, but I knew I wasn't ready. Like, you know, you have to continue to learn and grow and talk to people, network with people and learn. And then when that opportunity comes, it's like, man, I'm glad I didn't get this three years ago because there's no way I would have been ready for that. But it's just as you continue to grow and learn, mm -hmm. um, First and foremost, teaching the right way, being knowledgeable in your sport, knowing what you're talking about. And like I touched on in the beginning, helping people. Like it's, it wasn't a money thing. It wasn't a trying to get followers. It wasn't trying to be something that I'm not. Like be you, be authentic. Mm -hmm. And I think people see the value that you bring, your community, mm -hmm. they will continue to come. They will continue to support. They will continue to show you love. Mm -hmm. Obviously, Market your business. You know, it's important to have those things. I understand social media has a place, even though I can't stand it as a place <laughs> in life. But yeah. when you focus on those four things, helping people mm -hmm. the right way, being cool, I just think those things together will help you build your business the right way. Mm -hmm. So yeah. what have you what have you taken from playing at a really high level now yeah. into business? Um, it, it teaches you so much. It teaches you so much just being able to have the work ethic because I've had some clients, they want to go at five o'clock in the morning. I have some clients that want to go 11 o'clock at night, midnight. So it's being able, I'm used to waking up. I'm used to working out. I'm used to putting in that time and I've been in their shoes. Like I've, I, I, I understand what you're going through at this certain point. I know where you're trying to get. If I don't have the answer, I know somebody that has the answer. I want to try and help you out the best that I can. I don't know everything. Mm -hmm. I think that's, is that coaches sometimes and you know you've been in something for a while you've played we can get an ego yeah. you have to continue to learn like we learn from players just as much as players learn from us i i learn every time i work somebody out every time i step in the gym i'm always trying to learn something mm -hmm. i don't care if it's a younger kid i don't care if it's a pro we're always continuing to learn and grow and that's just how we grow together and that's just what i've always believed 
But yeah, playing, I think when you've played, obviously you have a you on it, you see things different, you can spot the BS when you see it. And that's the unfortunate side of it is like, I see stuff on Instagram, I'm not going to name names, but I see stuff on Instagram and it's like, parents are sending their kids here. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? I see it because I've played that have played can see it but not everybody sees it mm -hmm. so like about what your company specializes in i think you need to specialize in teaching the right way making sure mm -hmm. these kids that they're actually going to work on mm -hmm. if i have a, if I have a kid that's 12 years old and he's a role player he's not he doesn't have the ball in his hands the entire game yeah. i'm not going to him through a bunch of iso moves and step backs and all that kind of stuff because he's not going to implement that into his game Correct. i guess it's knowing your clientele. It's studying your, your the people you work with. Mm -hmm. you need to watch. You need to watch their games. Mm -hmm. If you're not game and and seeing them play, you have no business telling them what they should be doing. Period. And that's mm -hmm. just how I try to look at it. So from playing, I understand that, mm -hmm. and I just want to continue to grow in the right mm -hmm. direction. Basketball, football, baseball, whatever sport it is that you're trying to teach, mm -hmm. that you're trying to act the right way, and that you know what you're talking about. Mm, love that. So talk to us a bit about the difference between working with an NBA client and working with a, a youth youth type of athlete. Yeah. So for, for me, I don't think it really changes much, to be honest. And that surprises some people when I say that. I don't think your energy, energy should change. Your passion should change from a youth athlete to an NBA player. I treat them the same. And what I mean by that is the principles of what I teach don't change. Yeah. Balance, base, everything that we're trying to teach, I don't think it should change because I know I see, I get that question sometimes. I know some people, they switch it up from you have a young athlete, you have a, a, a higher level athlete, and you're mm -hmm. trying to change. If you really know what you're talking about and the principles of what you're teaching are correct, I don't think it changes. You mm -hmm. should give the same energy. I want to give that kid the same energy that I give somebody that's at the highest level. It's because I think that that's what they deserve. My passion, my foundation of teaching should never change whether mm -hmm. it's a female athlete uh, uh, a middle school player an nba player it doesn't it, it doesn't change mm -hmm. the foundation teaching uh, applies to all levels you might adjust some things and they might do a little bit more advanced things at the highest level but the core of what you're teaching doesn't change mm -hmm. agreed. Yeah. agreed so talk to us a bit about about some obstacles you faced when you first started your coaching business when i first started so it for me, the biggest obstacle was trying to manage additional clients, like trying mm -hmm. to manage a schedule, trying to figure out how to implement, you know, like I said, a, a whole schedule, trying to figure out how to run a business. Like I've never yeah. done that before. My whole life was just playing the sport. Mm -hmm. So when that, for now, it's like now you're in the business world. And, you know, like I said, it, it snowballed over to where I just had a couple kids in the beginning. It's kind of easy to manage. You know, a few days later, now you've got a couple more that are coming, a couple more that are coming, and it kind of just snowballs over. Mm -hmm. The fact that it helped me because I had played against a lot of these guys. So then when I started training, a lot of them just wanted to jump in anyways because I had competed against them. But mm -hmm. for me, that was the toughest thing to manage was just the spiral and trying to mm -hmm. figure out how people in and run a business. Mm -hmm. And that's why connecting, even now I'm still learning how to do it, like how to manage a real business. It is mm -hmm. when it starts to scale to six figure level, like it's it's really tough to figure out how to scale and manage mm -hmm. how paying you how are they how are you going to schedule it out are you going to do mm -hmm. this time groups because in the beginning i did a lot of one-on-one -on -one because i didn't know what i was doing I, yeah. I, I didn't know how to scale so as you know and i hear you guys talk about this all the time um but when you when you're working one-on-one -on -one, you can only go so far by yourself right. mm -hmm. so I started to learn like man i want to work smarter and not kill myself anymore because i would have <laughs> Eight hour days, it's like, man, this, this, I can't do this anymore. <laughs> so figuring out a way to work smarter, not harder, mm -hmm. and still make sure that they're getting quality work. That's the biggest thing. But yeah, just the, the scale of it has been the biggest obstacle for me. Just continuing mm -hmm. to learn. Mm -hmm. So, how many, how many athletes do you currently have in your program? That's a really tough question to answer because uh, it's it's continuing to grow. Um, it's mm -hmm. continuing. Okay. Um, obviously it's, it gets to a point where I'm starting to pass athletes off to other coaches in the area just because I don't want to overwhelm myself, but I'm, I'm blessed that it's grown to where it's got to. I don't know if I could pinpoint an exact number. Um, cause it kind of depends on the day, the time of year, obviously yeah. when it's, then it's going to drop a little bit, yeah. but 
you know, you, you just kind of continue to, to adjust. And like I talked about in the beginning, when you're genuine with your teaching, when you're really trying to help people, people continue to come. You'll have clients that fall off just naturally over time. That's just how things go. Maybe they stop playing um, and that's okay. Maybe they transition. Maybe they play multiple sports and now they're in a different season now and they're switching over. Mm -hmm. But then you want to have new people come in. Um, so, I mean, it's just staying busy. A lot of times during the school year, especially with youth athletes, you're working before school, you're working after school. And in the middle, you know, I might have some of my college guys or whatever, but it's just just continuing to grow and just trying to manage it and just trying to build. Not at the same time, like I talked about, trying to work smarter and not overwhelm myself. That's the biggest thing. Mm -hmm. And do you currently have staff in your business? I don't. That's actually the, the next step for me is I've had some interns that have come in and mm -hmm. they've kind of up and done their own thing, but it's really, really tough. I was actually just talking to somebody about that right before I, before I got on this, but just trying to figure that process out of mm -hmm. hiring somebody, like who's the perfect candidate to hire mm -hmm. to kind of carry on. Cause at the same time, when you run a business and you have a business, that person is not going to have the same passion that you have for the business. Mm -hmm. And that's the reality of it. So if you could find somebody that could give 60, 70% of what you do, and I could pass a little bit off of it. I feel like mm -hmm. that's the person to hire. And bring on. But I mean, we're in the age of entrepreneurs where everybody's trying to do their own thing. So it is tough, mm -hmm. but I'm, I'm starting that process now. Obviously that helps with the whole scale process because mm -hmm. I'm starting to the town a lot. Um, so it's like, if I can keep that rolling while I'm gone, mm -hmm. that's going to be. So I've had people jump in and help, but just trying to have that consistently would be, would be huge. Awesome. So something I know a lot of coaches that are watching are thinking to, uh, to themselves, how can you build a six-figure biggest business yeah. with just yourself as the coach? So give us a couple yeah. of, of tips on how, how you can do that. Yeah, I mean, it's, a lot of it is what I've talked about in the beginning. Is if mm -hmm. I noticed that, because I, I hear coaches that, especially younger ones that talk about they have problems with payments. They have problems with um, people showing up on time. And the best move that I made, the best business move that I've made so far, and there was a number of people that told me this, just being knowledgeable but not uh, asking the right people that have been in this for years, like just asking coaches that have been doing this for 30, 35 years, mm -hmm. um, what's your process like? How are you signing people up? How are you how are you accepting payments? Just learning those things early. I wish I knew it sooner. I was doing a lot of one-on-ones. Um, I never really had an issue with payments. Um, that was the I haven't had an issue with um, and that's what I was about to touch on is just focusing on the value focusing on the product that you bring mm -hmm. I feel like bring people value people will pay and I wish I figured that out a little bit sooner so coaches that are watching that are young that are just starting out you know maybe just out of college trying to start a business trying to get that going mm -hmm. instead of focusing on the money when I focused on the money I made less but when I just focused on, I want to get this kid to college. I want to get this kid to varsity. I want to get this kid to the next level. Mm -hmm. That kid told two of his teammates or that dad went and told two of his, you know, his work friends and kids that played. And it just kind of spiraled into that to where we switched things over from a one-on-one -on -one standpoint where you get paid when the kids come to a monthly. That was mm -hmm. the best was I switched things to a monthly payment system to where you, it's a commitment for athletes. If athletes are just coming in randomly, maybe you see them once, maybe you don't. Oh, you know, Sarah can't make it today. She has, you know, <laughs> she has a doctor appointment. You have a set time. You have a set weekly meeting. Oh, you know where it's at. You don't have to constantly text to communicate. It's set in place. When that was set up, that's when the money really took off. And it's, it's funny because I really wasn't even focused on the money and i don't think you need to have a big social media presence either that's the thing about it is a lot of people right now are focused on social media i think it's great i think it's you know that's a great tool to have i don't have the biggest platform but i've been able to build a business where it's sustainable and they, you know i can just do this full time because mm -hmm. i know they do a part-time you know maybe they do stuff at night after work whatever it is if you want to jump full time just focus on teaching the right way you know, making sure you're bringing value to these kids. If you bring value and you really help them, people will have no problem paying. They will have no problem paying a premium price if you're bringing them value. If you just shove them information right off the bat and they've never seen a workout, they don't know who you are, they don't know your story, that's when problems come up. But when they see the value, they understand that you're trying to help their kid and you can actually help them get to the next level, 
then I feel like that's when things start to line up for you. So that's how I was able to build it here. One led to another, and it's just kind of continued to grow. So, I mean, it's, it's been great. Mm. Yeah, I love I love the point you made is that when you get less attached to money, your business does better. Yep, yep. Um, and sometimes that's, that's the mindset we try to teach the coaches in our program. It's like yep. always focus on value rather yep. than money. Because money yep. will come once value is there. Yeah. So, so where where do you see this industry going in the next two to five years? Oh, I mean, you've seen how it's grown in the last two to five years. I just see it continuing to grow. Um, obviously, things are changing when it comes to club sports. When it comes to certain people that are, you know, trying to they they see the business and how it's grown. So I feel like more and more people are trying to get into it. Like it's a very saturated market now. Like, it, you know, even five years ago, it wasn't where it's at now. So I just see it continuing to grow. Mm -hmm. um, so coaches that are jumping in, mm -hmm. like we continue to touch on. It's just like just focus on, I don't necessarily say being the best or, you know, just continuing to bring value, like bring the best value, the best teaching, um, bring these kids the best value you can bring and just help as much as possible. Because mm -hmm. most people, they jump in for money. They jump in for attention. They jump in for clout. They jump in for all of these things. And honestly, a lot of coaches don't know what they're talking about. That's just the reality. But they see a video, they see the money in it, and now they want to jump into it. And now they think they can teach. Mm -hmm. That's the problem. One of the biggest problems in the industry, in, in my opinion, is just people just, they jump in without the knowledge, without really mastering their craft. And I mean, in a saturated market, I mean, how do you stand out from all these other coaches that are jumping in? Mm -hmm. Like, are you going above and beyond because I was heard the same when I was younger is like the person that does more than what they're paid for eventually will get paid more for what they do you know what I mean like it's if you're willing to go above and beyond for a kid that's going to affect their life in a positive way not and you're not doing it to get a return like you're not doing it to get something you're doing it because you genuinely care because you genuinely want you genuinely want to help mm -hmm. and I think if you if you approach it like that and you actually care about people, it's going to come back and, and, and help you in a positive way, especially in such a saturated market. I mean, as you know, I mean, it's all over the place. Mm -hmm. Everybody is training now. Yeah. And it shouldn't be like that, but everybody's training now. <laughs> so, yeah. 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 It's the it's the trend at the moment. Yeah. Yeah. And it's, you know, it, it, if you actually have a passion for it and you want to do it, I think that's great. I'm not bashing coaches, mm -hmm. but you have for the right reasons and a lot of people are not in it for the right reasons and that i take offense to that if i'm being really honest with it i guess you know you should be in this for the right reasons and actually trying to make an impact on people so that's the biggest thing it's mm -hmm. just focus on the right things all that social media all the money all the things that they think comes with it that will come with it if you approach it with the right mentality mm-hmm Mm -hmm. I agree. I agree so talk to us a bit about your current uh, sales and marketing process Okay. So when it comes to comes to marketing, word of mouth, most mm -hmm. important marketing you will have. I know in today's world, social media is way above and beyond for most people. And I obviously I have Instagram. I have all the social media platforms. I post every now and then. I probably should do a little more. That's probably where I'm lacking right now. It's just not as much social media just because I'm so... You know, I have such a passion for what I'm doing that I forget to record or just forget to post or just whatever. Yeah. Um, but it's word of mouth is the best thing, especially locally in your area. Mm -hmm. If you help people and a kid gets to the next level, say a kid gets a scholarship, mm -hmm. you're going to know that. Like, you, like they're going to tell somebody, man, like, who are you working with? I was working with, you know, so-and-so. And now those, those teammates are going to go. And it just continues to grow naturally. Like, if you have to force it. And you have to throw it in people's face. It's it's not going to grow organically. It's not going to grow naturally. Mm -hmm. Like just focusing on the value that you bring. That's what I, I continue to talk about it all the time. It's just focusing on the value that you helping people, and that's the best marketing you can have. That's how mine grew. It wasn't from social media. I don't have a hundred thousand followers. I don't. Mm -hmm. Maybe that does great. If it doesn't. I, I really don't care. I guess mm -hmm. help people. Whatever comes with that is great. The brand deals are great. The social media is great. The money's great. But at the same time, it's like, mm -hmm. if I can help kids and even ones that, you know, they might get to a certain level and not want to play anymore. But if you've learned work ethic, if you've learned waking up early, if you've learned how to work with the team, because as you know, any field you go into, you're going to have to deal with people, you know? Yeah. So it's just 
in those things, you learn a lot through sports. Yeah. And the, the AAU world, the, the sports world is parents mm-hmm. want to micro their kids. Mm-hmm. You know, first thing we look at when a new client comes into our business is do they want to be here? Is it you that wants to be here? Or is it your dad or mom or aunt or uncle, or grandma, or grandpa that is forced that is forcing you to be here? Yeah. And you know right if they have a passion for it and want to be there. Because mm-hmm. you're going to that's what this you that wants to be here. Obviously, the parents are the one paying. They're the ones setting it up. But mm-hmm. does your child develop and grow and be here? That's the biggest thing. Mm-hmm. So our, I, my sales process is you know, obviously we're, we're, we're marketing just from market to transaction. Um, I'm marketing it on social media. But word of mouth is my biggest. Mm-hmm. Is my big, it's just being able to constantly grow. You get one guy on the team that's at a high level, he's going to tell his friends that are playing. And they're going to come to yeah. the workout and want to work with you individually. It just continues to grow. Mm-hmm. And it's a natural progression and growth. And I think that's the best marketing you can have you know, in your business. Yeah, completely agree. Uh, so what 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 do you look for when you bring on a new client into your program? Um, I touched on it a little bit, but just making sure that they want it. That is that is them that they want to improve. They want to be dedicated. They want to commit to it. That's the mm-hmm. first thing. Because in the beginning, when people first start a business, I feel like they take on whoever whoever wants to pay, whoever wants to sign up. I'm at a point now where I'm being very picky. I want to make sure that kids that they're going to get value. I think that there are certain situations for kids that you know maybe they're not completely in love with the game yet. But just for me personally, like you have to have a you have to really have a passion for it. Yeah. You have to because that's it's going to be a waste of both of our times if if it's you know if yeah. you're you're being forced to be here, you're not going to grow. You're not going to get anything from it. Yeah. So it's sometimes you have to you know tell this person you know maybe I'm not the right person for you, but I've got somebody else that maybe is a good option and. You know, some people don't want to pass that money, up, but I feel like when you approach it like that, you have a genuine business. You come from a genuine mm-hmm. standpoint. Of mm-hmm. You're all hope those that want to get better, and that's going to look better on you because the people that that get to the next level, the, that's your results. Mm-hmm. If I have a that don't care, that looks bad on me. Like I, I want kids that want to commit, they want to be there, and no questions asked. I don't have to worry about you showing up late. I don't have to worry about you showing up today tired. You don't feel like it because you're going to have days where you don't feel like it, but you still do it like you. Like, that's the biggest thing about it. So that's mm-hmm. how I like to approach new clients. The biggest thing is I want to watch their film. I want to see you play. Mm-hmm. I use the analogy of it's like a doctor giving medicine. I don't even know what your problem is. Like, I want to mm-hmm. see you. I want to see what the, what the issue is. Maybe it's a mental thing. Mm-hmm. You know, maybe it's not even anything. Maybe you have all the talent in the world. We see this in every sport where the kids that they're workout warriors, they can work out all day. They can do all the drills. As soon as they get against competition, they have defense. Now they can't do it. Now mm-hmm. it's totally, yeah. totally out. So we're just trying to figure out what that issue is and how to address it. Mm-hmm. And if I answer, like I said, I'm going to try to find somebody that does and try to help them out the best I can. Mm-hmm. Love that. So talk to us a little bit about the importance of being picky. Because, as you mentioned, a lot of coaches just want to accept anyone because yep. they want to make money. Yep. But how important is being picky with the, the clients you work with? It's extremely important because it's it's you're coming in with a passion for the game. Obviously, you're running a business. You're coming in with a passion. So the kids that come in, they're a reflection of you. So it's mm-hmm. like if I have kids that are coming in and they have no passion for the game, you know what I mean? That's going to rub off on me. That makes my brand, that makes my company not look, you know what I mean? Now I look bad. I'm, now I look like I'm chasing money. You know what I mean? I've got a bunch of kids that don't even want to, that don't even want to be here. Like that. that's not, now I'm not looking forward to going to work. Now I'm not looking forward to going to the gym. I'm excited when I go every day because I know the kids that I'm going to meet up, they have a passion. They want to be there. They're looking forward to it. They text me. I don't have to text them. They're like, coach, I'm going to see you at three. I'll be there. They're beating me to the gym. I don't, I don't have to text them and chase them and I'm getting to the gym and I'm sitting there waiting. You know what I mean? I get there. They're stretched out. They're ready. They want to get better. And I think it's mm-hmm. really, really important because I look back and I turned a lot of people down in the beginning. I did the same thing in the beginning just because I wanted to. And I think it's experience of playing, just like noticing because my parents didn't push me. I They they didn't. They, they said, if you want to play, we'll support you. We'll be there. But you have to want to do that. If you want to go, you want to go work out, you have to do it. We're not going to push you. They were hands off. I feel mm-hmm. like that's a problem. 
parents are pushing their kids and trying to live through their kids because they didn't make it. So now there's a bunch of kids these workouts that don't even want to be there. Mm-hmm. So it's just being picky is really important because it's a reflection of you. It's, it's a reflection of your passion, your business. Bring in kids that, you know, and obviously there are a lot of kids, some of them are young. They're still mm-hmm. growing. They're still going to love the game, but they should want to be there. They should want to have fun because that's when you get better is when you're enjoying it and having fun. Mm-hmm. You can't, mm-hmm. ever, can't teach passion. I can teach skill. I can teach IQ. I can teach reads, but I cannot teach passion. Or mm-hmm. effort given. Yeah. <laughs> so that's- yeah, I agree, agree. So tell us a bit about how 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 do you manage your money then? Because what I'm I'm guessing when you get to six figures, yeah, you must be very good at managing money. Okay, because not yeah. many coaches get to six figures. So give yeah. us a couple of things that you you do within your business that helps you to manage your money better. I think the best thing is investing money back into your business, if that makes sense. By continuing to, because this is the vehicle that's going to take you for years to come. At least that's what I want. I want this to be something that continues on and that I can eventually pass down to my kids or or just, you know, just continue to have that legacy live on is with your money being very, very smart, investing it, putting it away, making sure that if I want to do a camp and I've got coaches coming in, that I'm, you know, I'm networking with the right people. I'm continuing to grow. I'm not just staying local. I'm continuing to grow around the country, trying to meet with different people, trying to invest in the right things. That's going to grow my brand because it's more than just basketball. Like I've got involved in other things such as like Deuce Brand that I'm wearing right now. I'm involved with them now. Like continuing to be as involved with different things as possible so you can continue to grow your market and just be far with your money. Like like you you touched on it. A lot of coaches, a lot of people in general aren't smart with the money. They spend what they don't have. They invest in things that they probably shouldn't because if you get clients paying up front, that's a lot of money right away that you're, that you're getting right away. So it's being very, very smart and almost being frugal, man, like just trying to be as smart as possible and investing in your business. Mm-hmm. I'm not spending on a bunch of stuff that I don't need. Like I'll go on vacation once a year, but I'm not going a bunch of different places. If I go somewhere, I have a camp or something that I'm, you know, I'm going to make some money while I'm there. Like just continuing to make Smart decisions, be very, very smart with your money mm-hmm. and put it in the right places. You mm-hmm. know, just learn about those things early and just just trying to be smart with it and just learn from people before you. That's the biggest thing is I try to always ask questions. I always try to learn from other people. That's how I found you guys. It was just mm-hmm. re- trying to look at different resources and people that have been doing this for a long time. How would mm-hmm. they make care? What are things that I can learn from them and continue to put implement into mine? Or maybe it's not exactly the same, but you can take things from a lot of different people and make it your own and, and, and grow it. And now you can pass it on to somebody else so they don't make the same mistake. So it's just managing your money and being very, very smart. And the biggest thing is invest in your business. Go get, like, learn as much as you can. We talked about mastering craft. Go to events. Like if, if there's an opportunity where you can network with other coaches and learn, because we don't know everything. There, you can be in this for 20 years and not know everything. I can go learn something from somebody. I can learn something from you right now. I already have on this call. You can learn something from somebody every day. So just continuing to try and invest in that knowledge as much as possible. Mm-hmm. So that's mm-hmm. the way I always try to approach it and just be smart and just make smart decisions. Try to learn. Yeah, I agree. Yep. I agree. So how, how do you stay self-disciplined? Uh, I give all the credit to my mom. <laughs> <laughs> Just I, I I had a single mom growing up. My dad was still in my life and involved. But just watching my mom um, do everything, you know what I mean? That's, that's everything. And my my dad was always there and always on me. He went to all my games. He wasn't in the household, but he was still involved in my life. Um, and they just were on me, you know what I mean? Right, right from the jump about just being committed to what you do. Like whatever it is that you jump into, you finish it, you give 100%. You commit to it um, and just trying to be you know, give, I, I expect commitment from athletes, so I need to be committed. <laughs> I can't, mm-hmm. I can't work out, can't be mismanaging anything. You have to be very, very organized. Mm-hmm. If you're in this business, you're in this industry, and you're disorganized, you're not organized, it's going to be rough, especially if you continue to grow and, and scale. It's going to be very difficult. Mm-hmm. You're going to you're miss appointments. You're going to, you know, you're just not going to be productive. Just being organized is one of the most important things. I'm still learning that. I'm still trying to be as organized as possible. But it's, you learn as you go, but just try to learn from other people. Don't be afraid to talk to people. Mm-hmm. Coaches are competition nowadays. They don't want to talk to each other. 
Mm-hmm. Like, and it's not like that in my city. It's like this in other cities. I talk to coaches all the time about, you know, I, how do you network with other coaches in your area? Oh, it's a competition here. They don't want to. You know, yeah. I guess we can share knowledge and grow the game together. Like, we, we can make this industry better together by learning from each other. I'm not afraid to share anything. Like, ask me any question, I'm going to answer. I don't care. Like, I'm open book mm-hmm. because – We've been through things and, you know, there's been issues that have come up that we don't want another person to go through. Like the yeah. industry continue to grow in the right way so that the athletes that we're helping are continuing to grow in the right way. Mm-hmm. So it's just constantly share knowledge and make sure that we're growing everything in the right direction and that it's progressing the right way. It's the most mm-hmm. important thing. Yeah. So that's, that's- yeah, love that. And also I think as well, it's, it's having a mentality of, Treating your business as a way of life, right? Yeah. Because you've got a lot of coaches who preach things to their players and then they don't do what they what they coach. Absolutely. So it, as, Absolutely. as you said, it's about if you're going to tell your athletes to do something, then you have to do it as well. Yep. Yep. So, exactly. If you, and I try not to say this often because people sometimes take it the wrong way, but I was talking about like, if you can't do it, don't teach it. Yeah. And all I mean by that is what you just said. Like, I don't necessarily mean you need to be able to do the exact move or, mm-hmm. or whatever. Like I said, some coaches didn't play the sport. Some coaches, you know, and they can be great coaches just because you didn't play. Um, you know, but it's just if you can't if you can't implement what you're talking about, athletes see through that. Like they, it's it's very obvious if somebody's full of you know I don't want to cuss on here, but it's there if somebody's not <laughs> somebody's full of crap, it's pretty obvious. You know what I mean? Like, can tell right away if somebody doesn't know what they're talking about or if they're not serious, especially high level athletes. Mm-hmm. They pick that up right away. It's like I talked about beginning because one of the biggest things is people see these big time trainers and they want to have elite athletes. Mm-hmm. I've been very blessed to be in an area that has a lot of high level athletes and be able to be in the gym with them. Mm-hmm. They pick up BS right away. If you don't know what you're talking about, if you're not serious, if you're not prepared, mm-hmm. I know coaches come to workouts not prepared. They have a study the athlete. They don't know their game. They don't know anything. They're coming in with just, I'm going to just figure it out when I when I walk in. I'll just figure it out. Pro athletes, they're coming prepared. They're coming ready. They want to get better. Youth athletes, you know what I mean, especially elite ones, like that's the same kind of principle. I want to come prepared and treat them the same way. I want to be prepared. Because right. athletes through BS, it, it's like if you're not, like you talked about it, you touched on it perfectly. That's why, you know, I wanted to go on top of that. But it's just mm-hmm. if, if you don't talking about they see through it. Just continue yeah. to knowledge on your craft and just be authentic. Don't be something that you're not. If you can't mm-hmm. do it, just mm-hmm. that simple. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I agree. So, Martin, tell us where, where do you see your business in the next five years from now? Um, I'm very day by day with everything. I try to take it day <laughs> by day. Obviously, long term, um, I'd like to continue to grow. Um, yeah. Just continue to connect with great people like yourself. Um, just continue to learn and know as much as I can about sports, business, um, and just have people as much as possible. Um, it's it's great to connect with people. It's, it's great to network as much as possible. Like networking is a very important part of coaching that I don't think is talked about that much. It's being very, very good at talking to people about having those conversations. How did you approach, how did you approach this? And people are very, because in the field that we're in, it can be a very lonely job. You can be in your city just with your clients, minding your own business in your corner, yeah. just not talking to people, not engaging, not sharing your knowledge, not trying to get knowledge from other people. And you can just be stagnant like that. But I don't think it's – you want to talk about how to grow a company, you grow through other people. Nothing important is ever done by yourself, ever. It's mm-hmm. through with other, through networking with other people and you guys grow together. That's the best way to approach it. So I just want to continue to connect, continue to grow. I don't know everything. I, I will never know everything. I want to continue to learn uh, and grow. There's no ego involved ever. Um, just just continue to help people as much as possible. Um, try to get as many kids to the next level as we can. Um, there's some kids that it's crazy when you continue to get older because when you've done this for a while, you start with kids that are in eighth grade. Like some kids are now in college that I had when they were eighth <laughs> high. It's crazy to me to see the progression and how these kids grow. So yeah. just try to feel impact as much as possible. That's the biggest thing for me. Awesome. Great. Perfect, Martin. Well, I want to thank you for, for coming on here, uh, sharing our sharing your story with our audience. Uh, I know for sure you're probably going to impact a lot of our viewers. 
So if any coach wants to follow you or get in contact with you, what is the best way to do that? Um, so I have two Instagram pages. Uh, my personal one is Martin underscore Anderson 253. My business is just Martin Anderson Basketball. That's both my Instagram pages. I try to respond as much as possible, but I respond right away. Um, that's the best way to keep in touch, keep in contact. Any questions, I'm an open book. I try to address as much as I could on here just because I see things in the industry. I just wanted to have a conversation just about things that I see. But if there's anything I didn't touch on, I would be happy to have those conversations with whoever. So that, those are my two Instagrams. Awesome. Okay, so, well, thanks again for coming on and look forward to connecting with you again in the future. Absolutely, man. Stay in touch. I would love to. Thank you. Yes, sir. Thank you.